The life of a medical student can feel like a constant battle against the clock. You know the feeling. Endless Anki cards, trying but not trying to do research, and that constant thought in the back of your mind asking yourself, am I studying enough? Well, in this video, I'm dropping seven battle-tested hacks that not only helped me survive, but helped me thrive in medical school. If you're new here, my name is J.R. Smith, and I'm a fourth year medical student at the Mayo Clinic. And as I prepare for graduation, I've reflected a lot about my experience as a medical student. I've realized that medical school is like running an ultra marathon. Just like those ultra distance races, med school requires incredible stamina and resilience. You've got to push through the miles and the inevitable blisters you'll develop along the way. It's like building a house from scratch. There may be a blueprint, but it's a massive one. It has tons of moving parts to keep track of and the pressure to build something solid and sustainable. Or like playing chess with a grandmaster. The residents and attendings are like seasoned chess players, always a few moves ahead, forcing you to think critically, anticipate consequences, and strategize your next move. There can be a lot of pressure on your shoulders. If any of this resonates with you, I think you'll find these seven productivity hacks helpful. And of course, we'll get more high yield as we go. So be sure to stick around until the end. Let's dive right in to productivity hack number one, which is fuel your focus. Because listen, medical school really is a marathon. It's a constant barrage of information, exams, and responsibilities. And if you want to crush it without burning out, you got to treat your body like the incredible machine it is. Think of it this way. Imagine your brain is a high performance sports car. You wouldn't expect the Ferrari to run on fumes and stale gas station snacks, right? You'd pump it with premium fuel, take it for regular tune-ups, and maybe even give it a fancy car wash every now and then. That's exactly what we need to do with our bodies. Here's the three-prong approach that I use to fuel my focus. First is exercise. You sharpen your mind when you move your body. We all know exercise is good for us, but did you know it can actually boost our cognitive function? One research paper found that increasing physical activity and physical fitness improves academic performance. They highlight that basic cognitive functions related to attention and memory are enhanced by physical activity. The second prong is sleep. Sleep is the unsung hero of productivity. Studying into the late night or even early morning may seem like a badge of honor, but chronic sleep deprivation is your enemy. When you're sleep deprived, your attention span plummets, your ability to learn new things suffers, and and you're more likely to make careless mistakes. Aim for seven to eight hours of high quality sleep each night. Consider it an investment in your academic performance. And the third and final prong to fueling your focus is your nutrition. What you eat matters more than you think. Forget surviving on ramen noodles and cold pizza. Your brain needs a steady supply of nutrients to function at its peak. Focus on whole foods, fruits, and vegetables, and lean proteins to give your body the building blocks it needs for peak performance. Think of it as feeding your brain with the best possible fuel. The second productivity tip to excel in medical school is to optimize your workspace. To truly be productive, think about crafting your perfect productivity oasis. We all know that our environment can impact our focus, and studies by environmental psychologists have shown a clear link between workspace design and cognitive performance. An organized space with minimal distractions can significantly boost our concentration and information processing. Think of it like decluttering our mind. The fewer visual and auditory stimuli bombarding us, the easier it is for us to focus on the task at hand. Now, the key here is personalization. What works for your best friend, the social butterfly who prefers the buzzing environment of a coffee shop or a campus library, may not work for you if you're more of a homebody who craves the comfort of your own space. Personally, I'm the latter with a carefully curated office for my studying. It's my productivity oasis. Clutter-free, controllable lighting, fake plans, and a standing desk because, let's face it, back pain can be another enemy of our academic success. But the key here is I experimented. I tried studying on campus, I've tried different desk orientations, even different study playlists until I found the perfect one for me. Which brings me to the point on studying with music. Some of you may swear by background music while others find it a recipe for distraction. Again, experiment. I have a study playlist that's a weird mix of classical music for deep focus and some chill lo-fi beats when I need to power through some repetitive tasks. The bottom line, optimize your workspace for you. Identify what fuels your focus and eliminate anything that saps your energy. Remember, a well-designed workspace can be the difference between a productive study session and a frustrating slog through endless flashcards. The third productivity hack is harnessing the power of do not disturb. In the age of constant notifications and social media pings, achieving a state of uninterrupted concentration can feel impossible. But hear me out. Deep work or a dedicated focus time to a cognitively demanding task is your secret weapon in the war against never ending to-do lists. In his book, Deep Work, Cal Newport shows how our brain simply isn't wired for multitasking. Every time we switch our attention from one task to another, it creates a cognitive switching cost or a delay in our brain as it refocuses. Imagine trying to craft a differential for a complex medical problem while also checking your social media feed. It's like constantly hitting the brakes on that mental Ferrari. Think of it this way. Deep work is like entering a laser focus zone. You're completely immersed in the task at hand, churning out high quality work in a fraction of the time that it would take you if you were constantly getting distracted. So how do we tap into this magical state? 
It all starts with mastering the art of do not disturb. Silence your phone notifications, close those unnecessary browser tabs, and let everyone in your life know you're entering a deep work zone. This might sound harsh, but trust me, a focused two-hour study session is way more productive than a scattered five-hour one filled with distractions. Here are some practical tips. First, schedule your deep work session. Block out specific times in your calendar dedicated solely to focused work. Next, put that phone away. Out of sight, out of mind. Silence your notifications or consider putting your phone in another room altogether. And lastly, use productivity tools. There are tons of apps designed to block distracting websites and silence notifications. Embrace them. One thing Madison and I do is have a 30 minute time limit for social media on our phones, and only the other person knows the code to unlock it. And unless it's a really good reason, which there usually isn't one, once that 30 minutes is up, it's up. Remember, deep work isn't about working yourself to the bone, it's about working smarter, not harder. By eliminating distractions and prioritizing focused attention, you'll be amazed at how much you can accomplish in a shorter amount of time. The next productivity hack is utilizing the right resources. Medical school throws an avalanche of information your way and navigating it all can feel overwhelming. That's where having the right resources in your arsenal becomes crucial. Imagine being a carpenter doing a complex woodworking project. You wouldn't just wing it, right? You'd have a toolbox full of specialized tools for every step of the process. Think of your studying resources the same way. We're going to talk about the main resource I recommend a bit later since it's one of the most high yield productivity hacks on the list. But outside of that, for productivity purposes, I think you should have a resource for organization and a resource for learning on the go. Here are two resources that have absolutely transformed my medical school journey. The first is Notion. Let's face it, staying organized in medical school can feel like an Olympic sport. That's why I swear by Notion. It's become my digital command center, a single platform to manage basically everything in my life. From keeping track of my to-do list, to breaking down huge assignments into a bit-sized task with deadlines, and it's fantastic for organizing my research. I can create dedicated pages for each project, compile key findings from other research papers, and link everything together for seamless information retrieval. If you want to check out my personalized Notion template and receive guidance on personalizing it to become your perfect workspace, you may want to check out my Evolving Student course. Now in terms of a resource for learning on the go, this actually brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Listening. Let's be honest, finding time to actually read all those research papers reviewed in medical school can feel impossible. That's where listening comes in that can turn research papers into high quality audio files. This way I can read those research articles while I'm commuting, exercising, or doing household chores. It's a game changer for staying up to date on the latest medical research, all while freeing up precious time for other aspects of my life. A recent study published in the Journal of Education Psychology actually found that listening to educational material can be just as effective as reading it. And it's so easy to just send over PDFs of the papers I wanna to read to the app whenever I come across them. And then when I have a few minutes, I just plug my AirPods in, turn it to two times speed and actually get the paper read. Part of a resource being a productivity hack relies on its ability to save us time and listening has been one of the biggest time savers for me as a medical student. But the key is just finding the resources that work for you, whether it's a mind mapping app to visualize complex concepts or a platform to organize your research. Having the right tools in your belt can be the difference between feeling overwhelmed and feeling empowered in your journey through medical school. The next productivity hack is finding an inspiring tribe. Believe it or not, surrounding yourself with the right people can be a major productivity booster. Think of it like this, a rising tide lifts all boats. When you surround yourself with ambitious, driven individuals, their energy and work ethic can rub off on you, pushing you to reach your full potential. I know what you're thinking. Competitiveness in medical school definitely gets a bad rap, often associated with those dreaded gunners who prioritize one-upping their classmates instead of collaborating with them, but that's definitely not what I'm advocating for. There's a difference between healthy competition that fuels growth and a cutthroat environment that breeds negativity. But let's stop running away from the term competitive. Competition is a blessing because it's just another tool that allows us to improve. Studies by social psychologists like Matthew Lieberman shows that surrounding yourself with high-performing individuals can actually improve your own performance. It's just a form of social learning. You observe their habits, their study techniques, and their unwavering focus, and it becomes the norm, not the exception. Let me give you an example from my own life. My study group is made up of some of the most dedicated, hardworking people I know. I am constantly inspired by them. They push me academically and motivate me to excel in all aspects of my life. We hold each other accountable, celebrate each other's success, and dream big together. This idea goes back to nearly 1000 BC where King Solomon wrote, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Surrounding yourself with those driven to succeed pushes you to become the best version of yourself. So be cautious of surrounding yourself with people who are negative or don't share your drive, and instead choose to be around students whose work ethic and productivity you admire. 
you might be surprised with how much their energy and dedication can uplift your own. We're coming up on the final two and most high yield productivity hacks. Number six is mastering active recall and spaced repetition. These are two study techniques that will transform your long-term memory retention and pattern recognition, two critical components to a successful medical student. Imagine cramming for an exam, rereading textbooks, highlighting everything in sight, you might feel confident in the moment, but how much of that information will you actually remember a week or a month from now? Yeah, not that much. The truth is, passive studying like this may work in college, but it doesn't cut it in medical school. To learn the vast amount of medical knowledge efficiently and thus increase your productivity, you need active recall. This just means that instead of passively rereading information, for example, you're actively attempting to retrieve it from your memory. This could be through self-testing with flashcards, doing practice questions, or even explaining concepts out loud. Studies published in some of the top journals like Science have shown that actively retrieving information strengthens the neural connections in our brains, making it much easier to remember things later on. Now, here's where space repetition comes in. Imagine cramming all of your studying for an exam into one night. Information overload, right? Space repetition tackles this by spreading out your review sessions over time. Think of it like watering a plant. Short, regular bursts are way more effective than drowning it all at once. Luckily, there's a fantastic tool that combines both active recall and space repetition, and that is Anki. It's basically a flashcard app on steroids. Anki uses flashcards with space repetition algorithms, forcing you to actively recall information and boosting long-term memory. It also tracks your performance and adjusts the review schedule based on your individual needs. So no more wasting time on already mastered concepts, which is a common unproductive outcome of passive learning. I have a video detailing exactly how I use Anki in medical school and I highly recommend checking it out after this video, but ultimately you can use any system that relies on the two principles of active recall and space repetition. This is key to not only learning the material, but also doing it in an efficient and productive way. The final, and in my opinion, the most yield productivity hack for medical students is to master your schedule. This means schedule everything. Not just classes and exams, but also your precious downtime, your gym sessions, that long overdue coffee date with your friend, everything. Why? Because things that aren't scheduled rarely happen. Studies by psychologists like Dan Airely demonstrate the power of pre-commitment. By scheduling in your non-academic activities, you're making a conscious decision to prioritize your well-being. And like we talked about in the first tip, we know how important that is for our productivity. Imagine this, a week where you string together a series of great days. You wake up refreshed, tackle your morning studies, hit the gym for a stress-busting workout, spend some time with loved ones, then crank out a bit more work before bed. Does this sound too good to be true? Are you more accustomed to constantly having to push tasks off to tomorrow and feeling like you still haven't had any true you time? The difference between those two scenarios may come down to what was on your calendar. And those days will compound, with one route leading to your long-term goals, and the other one leading to an unproductive and burned out you. Think of this like building momentum. Each great day fuels the next, allowing you to chip away at your long-term goals without feeling overwhelmed. But this is not to say that every day will go according to plan, that's just unfortunately not how life works. But by having a plan, you give yourself the best shot. Like Benjamin Franklin once said, failing to plan is planning to fail. And your schedule is simply your plan for the day. Mastering your schedule isn't about micromanaging every minute, it's about taking control of your time and building a roadmap to your goals. Now, for making it this far, I wanted to share a bonus productivity hack for you, and it's just reiterating what I already briefly mentioned earlier, which is taking my evolving student course, where you'll learn a lot more about strategies you can use to excel in medical school, but also receive access to my exclusive Notion workspace template that'll help you personalize, and you'll also receive lifetime access to our Teach As You Learn mentorship community designed for pre-med and medical students. Here, you both can provide guidance to students behind you while receiving guidance from students ahead of you. We have monthly events ranging from topics like performing on step to publishing papers. We're really just a huge family. So if any of that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description and use coupon code PRODUCTIVE to get 50% off the Evolving Student course. And this code will only be limited to the first 100 students. So if you're interested, check it out soon. But I hope that you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, you may enjoy this video where I discuss how we can master our discipline because discipline is going to be key to actually following that schedule we just talked about. As always, keep evolving and I'll see you guys in the next one.